A very strong norm rating tournament is taking place in Pune. It's called the first Maharashtra GM Open tournament. The unique thing about this event is that only players above the rating of 2000 are allowed to play. And this makes the tournament very valuable because players can score their IMs and GM norms. I want to talk about one specific game from this event. It happened in the 8th round and the white player is the very strong IM, Nuber Shah Sheikh, uh, who is rated 2443 and his opponent Divya Deshmukh, who is WGM and the current national women champion of India. The game is super exciting, so I would love that if you guys just check it out, enjoy it, maybe guess some moves or relax with it. Let's go. Nuber opens the game with knight f3. Divya goes d5, g3, and now knight d7. This is already slightly weird move, but Divya has the idea of playing her pawn to e5. Nuber stops it instantly with d4. And now b5 played by Divya. She's looking for a creative play in this game. a4. Nuber instantly calls out the move and says that if you take on a4, then your a7 pawn will become weak and isolated. So Divya pushes her pawn to b4. c4 played. e6. Knight to d2. Knight f6. Both players develop. Bishop g2. c5 played. But here is where... I have a small problem with black's position. Black seems to be underdeveloped to take such a bold step in the center. Nubair took on d5 and now after knight takes d5, he castled. Divya played her pawn to a5. So she is having tremendous faith in her position that she can play as slowly as she wants. Here, if white had played d takes c5, knight takes c5, and now knight to c4 or even knight b3, let's say here knight b3, it seems like white has definite edge here. For example, let's say bishop b7, I have some very irritating moves like either knight e5 or bishop g5, white is pressing here. But Nuber went for the move e4 and what could be more natural than hitting the knight in the center? Divya went back with her knight. And now came the move d5. So Nubel's idea is that I want to open up the position. If you take, take, this is clearly better for white. Look, this bishop will open up on this diagonal. The rook will come here. The knight will come to c4. This is bad. Okay. So bishop e7 is what could have been nice for Divya here. Yes, your e6 pawn does get weakened. But eventually you can castle and... It looks like a fine position. But Divya went e5. Okay. Nuber went b3. This move does two things. First of all, stop c4. Also develops the bishop on b2. Bishop a6. Rook e1. Bishop d6. And here was an important moment uh, for Nuber. Okay. He played bishop b2, which is fine for the time being. Uh, I would have liked if bishop f1 was played to exchange of that bishop, but okay, bishop b2. And now Divya played queen e7. And this is the moment where Nuber played an incorrect move. He went rook to c1. And this is your first question in the game. What would you play here as black? Black to move. Beautiful position. The move here that black should play, and if you found it well done, is the move a positional pawn sacrifice c4 excellent move because after takes that was played in the game divya took with the bishop takes and knight c5 and look at her knights so beautifully post posted and now she's attacking this weak pawn if that is lost black will have two passers on the queen side mm. instead of rook c1 perhaps an interesting move was bishop f1, stopping these c4 ideas. And also, after rook c1, if Divya would have castled, then bishop f1 gives white a clear edge. Because once the bishops are traded, the knight will sit here and white would be doing very well. c4 takes, takes, takes. And now Nuber realized that, oh my god, my position is already worse. 
what should I do? I can't keep on playing in the normal way. And this is the good thing about strong players. They always take things in their own hands. They are like, I cannot wait and grovel here. So Nubert played this very interesting move, knight to d4. And his point is that if you take here, e5 is going to win for white. I mean, just to show you, if you take, I take on d4. With f4 coming up, the game is over. So Divya didn't really touch the knight. She took the pawn on a4, attacking the bishop on b2. Bishop went back and now she castled. Black is better. Knight f5 went queen to c7 and rook b1 was played f6. So at this point, if black is given some time, black will go knight to b6, b3 maybe, a4. The pawns will start rolling and white will have no real counterplay. So Nuber uh, getting a bit desperate here went g4. He wants to start a kingside attack, but it's not going to work out. Rook b8 by Divya, good move. g5, this is a free pawn. She takes it. Queen g4 in the position. Now, the pawn is pushed to b3. If you went h6, I think h4 and white gets counterplay. So, b3 was played. Now, queen takes g5, b2 traps the bishop. So, you can't take it. Rook e2 was played. And now uh, knight b6, Divya came back with a knight. It was also possible to go to d3. Next move, bring this knight here. Also, this knight can go to f4. So, this was pretty strong. Knight b6, rook to e3. And now a4 was played here. Uh, I'm wondering why could you not take on c4? Actually, she could have taken here. And after rook to c3, there is knight a3, rook c1 and knight c2 when black is very much in the driver's seat also after knight c4 rook h3 there is b2 and there's no way to mate because black is completely under control here but uh, it so happened that a4 was played and now queen takes g5 a3 knight takes d6 uh, and very important moment in the game now, what should black play here, black to play? If you decided to play queen takes d6 here, then bishop takes e5 could cause some serious trouble. Why? Because now there is a queen attacked and also bishop takes g7, I mean queen takes g7 is a mate. So queen g6 and after take take, rook takes b3 knight takes b3 rook takes b3 the game still goes on it's not so clear who is better here so a very important intermediate move after knight d6 is a2 threatening to take the rook and queen the pawn uh, here nuber could have taken on b3 but after knight b3 rook b3 and knight takes c4 already black is winning here So after a2, rook c1 was played and now queen takes d6, bishop e5 and once again, what was the move that Divya came up with here? Very nice move. So here there are, uh, I think, two or three options. You can play your queen to g6, which is a nice move. You also play it to h6, which is also a good move. But Divya, very romantic he took here with queen takes e5. Excellent move. Queen takes e5, sacrificing the queen, and in comes knight takes c4, forking these two pieces. So, and there are no checks here because the knight covers e6. Rook takes c4 is played, and the move that is played by black b2. Excellent move here. These two pawns are very, very strong, and in fact. Black is full queen down, but in return has two potential queens. How unique is this position? So it's very unique. For example, if you take rook takes c5, now a piece up, but I go queen check, bishop f1, make another queen, and at the end of it, I am a queen up for a piece. You know, so just in two moves, two pawns become queens. So rook a3 was played, queen, bishop f1. 
and now divya could have won this game much faster here if she would have played there were many different moves but knight d3 was very clean uh, if you take with the rook i can queen and otherwise f2 under pressure the knight is well placed hitting the queen white would win this uh, black would win this there was also queen e1 which is very strong and then rook b1 which was also winning but knight d7 was played by divya and this allowed nobert some fighting chances he took on d7 queen and now black is an exchange up but white has two pawns although the weakness of white king should give uh, black a clear advantage so queen g4 rook to b1 queen had to become passive queen e5 h3 h6 queen d3 check here king hip to h1 rook b2 rook c2 rook takes f2 and here uh, nobert could have really made divya's task difficult if he had found rook c8 check king h7 e5 check queen g6 take take by the way you can't really give rook h8 check here because king takes h8 queen takes g6 there is rook takes f1 so first take take king g1 and this game still goes on it is not so simple to win this although black is better but rook takes b2 was played and now this is easy for black to win mainly because these pawns will not be easy to push and queen f4 already threatens mate here so d6 threatening a mate on h2 here queen h2 so bishop g2 and rook d2 queen f3 the queens are traded and after rook takes d6 it is clear that black is going to win this uh, divya took her time but the result was never in doubt you can see her technique was pretty good she brought her rook to e5 and then slowly uh, forced nobert to push the pawn gave a check and then yeah won the h pawn stopped the e pawn and took this with a win here nobert resigned and the game was over what a game this was kudos to divya for phenomenal play also a big shout out to nobert for you know making the game so interesting uh, we have the final moments of this game that was recorded by Aditya who was there at the venue and you can watch it. You can click here and watch it uh, above me uh, and you can see how everyone had gathered in around this game. It was really an exciting experience because there were so many people. Here's a few pictures from this. So many people stood there watching the game and it was very very nicely played by divya once again congrats to her this is sagarsha signing off bye bye